episode number one. Go, Mommy! Hello, sisters! Welcome to Women with Balls in the Air. Join me as I uncover the modern-day secret to success. I'll share with you strategy, tips, and bonus interviews from today's most influential matriarchs. Career moms, it's time to take back your life and get into the game of gumption. And here is where we're going to do it. Let's go, girls! Hello, and thank you so much for taking time out of your hectic schedule to listen to this podcast and hang out with me. I really appreciate it, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Today's mission is to help pleasantly push you out of your comfort zone so that you too can reap the benefits of a fun and fulfilling life and career. First, I will share with you my Martin Scorsese story, which is a great example of how to skyrocket out of your comfort zone. And then we will dissect the story to give you compassionate advice and actionable tips on how to become fearless. Because I acquired so much knowledge from this experience of being on set with Marty, I'm going to break it down into a three-part series with each episode diving deeper into the story and into detail about the specific lessons I learned. I'll share my experience speaking with Matt Damon and Martin Sheen, and I'll add a little fun fact that I learned about Leo DiCaprio. Okay, now that I have your attention, let's get started. For in-depth information and links to today's podcast, please visit our show notes page that accompanies this episode at kcdstefano.com slash marty. Today, let's talk about Martin Charles Scorsese, affectionately known as Marty. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Marty's work, he is widely regarded as one of the most significant and influential filmmakers in cinema history and a personal Italian-American hero of my own. I had the honor of spending four days on set with him while he was filming the Academy Award-winning film, The Departed. It was one of the best experiences of my life, and not for the reasons that I thought it would be. Members of the Directors Guild, please welcome the five, come on, gentlemen, the five nominees. Come on, let's come down for Best Outstanding Director of a feature film by the Directors Guild of America. The DGA Award has traditionally been a near-perfect barometer for the Academy Award for Best Director category, so it's a pretty big, pretty big deal in the biz. So I'm sitting there at the event in the front row, about 10 feet away from Marty Scorsese, Clint Eastwood, and a few other very talented men. I was in awe and ready to inhale their great words of wisdom. And about 30 minutes in, I said to myself, wow, I'm having such a good time. I'm so relaxed. I'm really enjoying this night. But then I was like, wait, wait, wait. What's wrong with this picture? Relaxing felt wrong. I'm usually stressed and anxious at these things. And why is that? Well, every time I attend these industry events, I promise myself to jump out of my comfort zone. I promise myself that before I walk in that door, that I will get up to the mic and ask a question to the participants. I usually go into the event prepared on the subject and I, and I brainstorm about questions that I might have, or sometimes it just kind of organically comes while I'm sitting there. I participate in these events to one, conquer my fear of talking in front of people, two, learn something specific that will help me, and three, try to get my face known to other people in the business. So basically, I don't just go to an event, I strategize it. But tonight, I didn't. I just went. And I think basically it was because I was preparing for my wedding and my head was kind of in the clouds, so. At this particular event, I sat there staring at these five iconic men. As their voices trailed off in the background, I said to myself, Wait, wait, what, you know, what are you going to do to make the most of this night? How can you propel your learning forward? Who can you meet? Who can you network with? As I sat there, my anxiety meter started rising. And then the only idea that I came up with was to ask one of the nominated directors for the opportunity to shadow them on set. 
Now, shadowing is usually when you follow someone around their film or TV set and and watch how they work. It's at no cost to them or no cost to anybody or, or any kind of time or really effort. So I said, eh, you know, maybe that's not too much to ask. But then wait, how will I ask this of them? They're like these icons up there. They'll probably say no. I'm a nobody. I have no connection with them. I don't know them at all. Um, people who probably bother them all the time, uh, and they don't want to be bothered. They got too much on their plate. So these are the things that were going through my head. And then I just kiboshed my fears. I redirected my thoughts to the outcome that this situation could bring. What a cool story this would be to tell my fiancé, Martin. And yes, he bears the same name. What do I really have to lose? My fiancé is not going to leave me if someone says no to me. The earth is not going to crumble. Hey, even the lights, they're not going to go out. So what's the big deal, right? So once I calmed down, I said to myself, who could I learn the most from? And that answer was simple, Marty Scorsese. And of course, he has always been my favorite. And he's shooting The Departed in the spring. Perfect. But at the same time, they represent the diversity <coughs> that can be expressed in our craft. As soon as the event was over, I sprung out of my seat and I made a beeline for Marty. As I approached him, I had a big smile on my face and my hand was already reaching out, ready to shake his, before we were even close enough to connect. He smiled back and extended his hand. I was in. I said, hello, Martin. My name is Casey. I'm the co-chair of the Women's Steering Committee. Thank you for such a great interview and, and thank you for your great body of work. I too am an Italian American and I think you do a wonderful job portraying us in all the good and bad. You're my favorite director and I would like to know if I could shadow you on set. I think I could learn so much from you. And he said, me? Well, um, well, I'm not really sure. What can you learn from me? And he was being honest and authentic. Can you believe that? One of the best filmmakers of our time said that. That was w totally not what I expected. I had this look of like awe and shock on my face. Like, did he really say that? And I was like, you know, I didn't say anything, but the look on my face was like, are you serious? And then I think he read my face and he said, well, well, yes, if you want to, please call my producer, Joe Reedy. He can try and, and set up a schedule. He said, I can't promise you anything, but we can try and make it work. So then he gave me Joe's cell number, and I said, oh, wonderful, Martin. Thank you so much for all that you do. I look forward to the possibility of learning from you. I'll call Joe, and thank you again so much. From there, I smiled politely. I was probably, like, bowing to the man, and then I backed out of there. I calmly and swiftly beelined to the parking lot to get into my car. I hid in my car and I shook and I cried. I was so sick to my stomach. I went against every bone in my body, every instinct to be kind to myself and just enjoy the night. Every thought that said, you can just as easily go home, just leave, the event is over. But I didn't listen. I stayed, I got in there and I nailed it. And you know, if I didn't break out of my comfort zone, I would have been sitting in that car wishing I did talk to Marty. And instead of tears of joy, they would have been tears of sadness. I might have never had the opportunity to, at the minimum, shake the hand of one of my idols. I slapped fear in the face and I got a handshake back. And once I stopped shaking, I patted myself on the back and I called my fiancé to make it real. We were both so amazed. The awe in his voice made it all worth it. It was just, I just felt so cool. It took some time and a few calls, but weeks later, Marty's producer, Joe Reedy, kept his word. He had to strategically fit me in the schedule when Jack Nicholson wasn't working, because Jack doesn't allow on-set visitors. So, graciously, Joe Reedy took the time for little old me to make it happen. Thanks again, Joe. So there you have it. I jumped out of my comfort zone and onto a plane heading for Brooklyn, New York, to shadow Martin Scorsese on the set of The Departed.
By using this story as a case study of sorts, I'd like to help you break out of your comfort zone with as little risk and anxiety as possible. Next, I'll talk to you about some simple strategies that I used. I hope you can take some of these tools and make them work best for you in your situation. But first, let's take a quick split commercial break. It's time to get in the game and compete. Let KCDStefano.com create a stunning website and engaging video for your growing business so you can monetize, monetize, monetize. Go to KCDStefano.com and click work with us and together we'll have a blast making your dreams marketable. Hey folks, if you've always wanted to start your own podcast, head over to the show notes page that accompanies this episode. There, you will find a special link to Entrepreneur on Fire's free podcast course. It's 15 videos in 15 days, and they will have you podcasting like a pro. It's fun, and it's easy, and it is free. I did it myself, and it was fantastic. So go to kcdstefano.com backslash marty1. you got to check it out. Okay, thanks for hanging in. How did I network and get four days with someone I respected and idolized? I skyrocketed out of my comfort zone and I just did it. Now let's dive into what this podcast episode is really about, getting you to jump out of your comfort zone and make things happen in your life. I can tell you how awesome the air is out here, outside the arena of relaxation, but you're really not gonna appreciate it until you venture out yourself. Say you just hate networking, going to work events, uh, a conference, or even a party that you don't know anybody. Does anyone really want to talk at their child's board of ed meeting? Who likes asking their boss for a raise? None of us do. So I'm not telling you to jump off that cliff right away because you'll never do it. It's too scary and reckless. I get that. Just as I never would have approached Marty if I haven't spent a lot of time out of my comfort zone beforehand and have built that muscle of behavior to do so. And still sometimes I stay in that warm, fuzzy zone. But nine times out of ten, I'm jumping, and I'm reaping the benefits, and it's awesome. So hopefully, in this podcast episode, I can help you get there too. Okay, so how do we start stepping out of the comfort zone on a regular basis to get what we need in life? Here are five suggestions to start thinking about. One, it takes awareness. Simply realize that your comfort zone is a behavioral space where your activities and behaviors fit a routine and a pattern that minimizes stress and risk. It provides a state of mental security. Know it exists. Know that, like your mother, it will always be there for you and you can come back to it. Yet, it's time to fly the coop and be independent and seek out the rest of the world. So when you start feeling uncomfortable, it's okay. It's absolutely normal. But no, you have to feel this way. You have to experience these feelings in order to accomplish what's ahead of you, just like everyone else who has done it. I have mothers that I mentor that talk to me about being afraid of going to network events. What should I say? What should I do? What should I wear? I laugh, not at them, but at them. You gave birth. I can't imagine anything more horrifying, more scary, more uncomfortable, more miserable. You can't get much farther out of your comfort zone than that, mentally and physically. To squeeze a watermelon out of a lemon hole should be illegal. It's incomprehensible. But millions of us women do it. And we do it because we understand and think about the benefits and rewards of being a mother. So be aware of your comfort zone and realize you can get out of it. Two, grow perspective. In taking calculated risks, what do you really have to lose, really? What I mean by calculated, don't ask your boss for a 40% raise when the standard is 5%. What is the worst that can happen? Someone says, no, a little rejection, or not right now, or, or maybe you get embarrassed. So what? We're all human. We all have many imperfections. In most of our daily life situations that deal with career advancement, if we speak up, we're not going to be thrown into a Turkish prison. Our children won't be carted away. They're real problems. Having children puts this 
into perspective now more than ever. Nothing else really matters as long as my children are healthy and safe, and I'm not afraid to take outside risk or embarrass myself as long as it doesn't affect them in any way. Three, positive self-talk. Talk and listen to yourself. You know what to say to inspire yourself. Dig down to that place where your inner superhero lives. You got this. Pretend you're in a situation and your kids are watching to see how you'll handle it. What would make them proud? What kind of example do you want to set for them, for them to mirror in their own life later? A scared mouse or a fierce mama lioness? Don't you want to hear them say things like, My mom can do anything. She rocks. I want to be just like her someday. When I'm having a tough time jumping out of my comfort zone, these are the things that I think about. I used to have a tough time selling on the phone. So I put my children's artwork in front of me when I make those calls. And there is nothing more powerful than a handprint of a turkey or the written words of, Mommy, I love you. Four, preparation. Now that we have identified some of the fears and conquered those pesky little cockroaches, let's get out of our head and onto the stage. Whatever the situation, event, or just a simple conversation, prepare. It's so important. Think when you were in college. Didn't you feel kick-ass when you were ready for that midterm exam? Or did you enjoy slugging in after a night of boozing and losing? I've been on both sides, and I've got to tell you, the first line of reasoning is a lot better. It's okay to think, what can I get out of the situation? Maybe I can meet a new friend or buddy up with a colleague and maybe we can help each other in the company. Or maybe my goal is to have three conversations and give my business card out. Maybe you are at a play date and it's full of moms and your goal is to set up another play date for your son who has social issues. Knowing what you want beforehand allows you to organically ebb and flow with the situation. And it gives you the confidence to get the job done. Personally, I always make it a game, as I do pretty much with everything. I like to compete against myself. So if I'm going to a networking event, I usually set some goals. One goal I always set no matter what is the first thing is, and which is the easiest to me, is to try to help somebody. So I'll either connect them with somebody else or give them a tip or a guide to somewhere, maybe a blog or a book or a website, whatever it is. And that's something I kind of do for myself. It makes me feel good. It breaks the ice and it kind of gets me going. Then if there's a question and answer, I always make myself ask a poignant question. Or if it's just a networking event, I'll say, okay, Casey, you have to talk to three different people tonight. And thinking of these things beforehand is just a way that I prepare and strategize for the event or the play date or whatever it might be. Five, be your appropriate self. If you are self-assured, prepared, and know what your goal is already, I find this makes it so much easier for me to be myself. And when I say myself, there are about six different versions of me. How I act when I'm a mommy, a wife, a best friend, a business owner, an acquaintance, and a teacher. Each hat fits on the same head, but all look a little different from the outside world. So make sure you come to your event with the right hat on. I would have absolutely loved to hug and kiss Marty Scorsese like he was my best friend who I haven't seen for years. But I don't think I would have gotten the same results. And then don't go the other way and put on airs. No, that you are a very important person as you stand right now, how you are. Egos are out. Authenticity is in. The most important aspect to all of this is to start committing. Take baby steps. Discipline yourself to practice all the time. You want to be ready when your Martin Scorsese is standing in front of you. You want to have the gumption to go up and talk to him. Everyone else in that theater would have loved to talk to him. And I conquered my fear and I did it. And look what it got me, valuable life lessons that have helped me tremendously and something that I can share with you. So please practice what works for you in your own personal situation and try new things out. Make it a game and reward your wins. Mark your calendar with a big fat star each day. You do the littlest thing towards jumping out of your comfort zone. Treat yourself to some ice cream, whatever. 
Realize that if you want to get what you want, many times you have to step over to the other side. Trust me, if I can do it, I know you can. You know you can. Hey, we can do it together. The only thing you have to do is just start. And don't worry, I'll be right here with you, sister. I'm holding your hand across the airwaves. So please check out next week's podcast episode number two and get a real behind the scenes experience of what it's like to be on set with Hollywood's big boys. I'll share with you what I learned from Martin Scorsese. Then stay tuned for episode three. I will dive into my conversation with legendary actor Martin Sheen. And we'll also talk about my experience with my favorite actor to date, Matt Damon. And yes, mamas, he's even cuter in real life. So... Remember, you can have a successful career and an abundant family life without pulling your hair out. A future chock full of meaning, happiness, and stability. And even more importantly, you have the power to create a role model for your children of strength and stick to Don't ever give up on your dreams. Keep listening and I'll get you there. It's our time now. Skull! Mm.